So hey there guys, I've just watched episode 18 of Vinland Saga, the reaction is in the description, the links are there, go watch it and uh, go back here if you want to listen to the discussion. And the discussion starts right now. And yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm gonna forget what I was trying to say in the end of the episode. Maybe I should start from that point. Mm. No, I'm gonna get back to that. So the episode was good. That was a really good episode in terms of um, the overall cinematography and how it combined uh, brutal fighting and some beautiful scenes, uh, some development, some character development scenes, and some flashbacks, and some all of that. So it was it was a nice, well-made episode. One of those episodes that are memorable because of the way they are created, the way the weight they have. You know, it's not just that, not just that. No, it's like filled with everything, and that's great. Uh, even though it kind of broke the um, tension in the fights, but I mean Bjorn fight wasn't even a, there was no tension. I knew he was gonna murder people. Um, uh, the tension with Thorkel and Thorfinn that was there before the fight started, but then I kind of saw that. I mean, they were fighting serious fight not just like pretending to fight maybe Thorkel wasn't um, uh, using his whole straight string and but Thorfinn was actually <laughs> trying to murder the man but there was no feeling that they're like there to kill each other anyway so uh, I was kind of kind of more more or less con uh, confident that they're gonna live um, and that happened. So so even if the tension in the episodes in the fights were kind of losing because of the switches back and forth. But that was not the main focus. The fight was not a main focus. The main focus was basically the prince and his development and the moment with the priest when they were speaking about love and like all of that. I don't want to go too deep into that because, well, first of all... We just saw that all in the screen, on the screen. The second is that, I mean, it's not a simple topic to speak about. And the third, I mean, um, it's not like it's uh, some scientific fact, right? It's just a philosophical way to think about that. And I see quite a lot of uh, right things in, in that. At least, it's not like when you die, there, now, now that's love. No, 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 no. Of course, love, it's it's a feeling. And it has to be in the real living person. So that's bullshit. And maybe I got it wrong, but um, I don't agree with that. And I'm not going to argue even. Like, okay, they said it. That's a way to think about it. But what I really liked is that they brought the fact that people that were living there... And I was constantly, during all those 18 episodes, I was burning my goddamn tree with my fiery butthole. And, goddamn, um, I was burning my chair, not a tree. <laughs> I was burning my chair with burning butthole. Um, because of uh, anger of, uh, you know, of like everyone killing everywhere, everyone like brutal... Murders, women, children, they don't care. And they brought that. They brought that. That the fucking life that is there, that is now at those times. It's, yeah, it's... A, um, people are dying. There's no love. There's, like, only fuckers living there. Sinners and all that. So, that's a right idea. And finally, they touched upon this idea. And they brought it. And, yeah, I mean, that was obvious and um, just for those people to realize that that's good and so I suppose the Prince Canute now after realizing all of that he now gonna um, try to fix this world to make it a better place I guess um, 
and uh, this anime better not uh, try to make Askelet a good guy because he killed those villagers just for Prince to have his development. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking hate that. I'm gonna still fucking hate Askelet and I'm gonna hate the story for doing that because I am not with the uh, philosophy of uh, you're gonna kill thousand to, th to save like two thousand. No, 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 no. You're gonna fight, uh, find another way to save all of them, or at least as much as you can. Uh, so yeah, Askelot killing them—that's beyond redemption, anyways. And basically, I mean, I don't even think I have to go through the episode that much. Uh, first of all, yeah, we have to say that Thorkel is respecting. Um, Thorfinn and when his one of his guys, I mean quite a lot of his guys started laughing uh, he smashed the man head, the man's head and that was pretty pretty smart idea I mean it was a stupid idea by the man who laughed by uh, Thorkel showcase that uh, he actually respects him, uh, Thorfinn a lot and then we saw quite a beautiful and interesting flashback about uh, Ragnar. So, so R I didn't know that Ragnar basically raised the prince completely. Um, I thought that the prince was living in the castle, you know, and then he was raised by his normal family, but just Ragnar was someone who was close to him. But the way they show it, it's like they were living in some nice place together, like basically a whole family. Ragnar, his wife, I suppose, and, and uh, little Princey. Uh, they were just living there, and Prince were not liking the fact that he ended up being a prince. He, he, was, he would be just super happy uh, with living a normal life. And yeah, that's uh, that happens. Uh, some people wish for that to be born in some famous family to be living that type of life to have power um, and influence but others who, who's getting born at those places they are not really liking it it's like it's um, I don't remember whose uh, story was there there was like a prince and um, how it's called one sec Uh, Prince and what? How did uh, oh that's Mark Twain. That's Mark Twain. Prince the Prince and the Popper. I never knew the actual English name. But yeah, the story about the guy who was born as a prince and the similar looking guy who was living the lowest type of life and they decided to switch sides. Because they wanted one wanted one, another wanted the other, and they they f they had some fun both of them, but then they realized that that is not that simple. So yeah, that's how that happens. And the prince at his current state, he was not liking that, and that is the issue uh, for me, as I've said in the end of the episode, that we had this emotional moment that showed us the prince's real feelings and we kind of knew that we kind of knew all that uh, and um, he went through the moment of Ragnar being killed now they had those this spiritual farewell ceremony I'd say and Ragnar said like you have to be strong prince you have to be strong and normally normally after having this starts a slow and steady development for a character, right? He starts changing little by little, here and there and this and this and that. But what happened here, it was like that. <laughs> Prince completely decided to fucking respect all of his skill points <laughs> and now he's a completely different person and this is extremely unrealistic it's like if I'm gonna just instantly 
act gay. Like, ooh, ooh, to kitty kitty, hasa to kitty. Hmm. No, that's unreal. I have to become that through some changes in my life. It's not happening like that. The same with the prince. I get it. I get it. I mean, he went through a lot and that's okay if he changed in the future, but not like fucking that. Um uh, actually, it's quite an interesting coincidence. I've uh, recently watched uh, Death Note and uh, I did not like it because of many reasons. And one of the reasons was that... I'm not going to go into spoiler details, but the, 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 the one of the main characters, which I actually don't even consider the main character because he's just a fucking bastard. I hate him. Uh, in the very beginning, he was a normal guy and then in one episode... He went from that, okay, from from zero to hero, but no, from hero to dick, to fucker, in one episode. There was no development, no nothing, just boom and done. And that's extremely unrealistic. And I voiced my opinion on that, and uh, a lot of people agreed, but one guy, even though he agreed to what I said. Um, by uh, you know, in other points, uh, he actually told quite an idea. I'm not sure if that's actually true or that's his opinion, but his opinion is pretty fair. I liked it, um, and the opinion was that um, it's not like the character had a very sudden development. No, um, it was just like the character was constantly living, you know, under the mask. It's like in Persona game, you know, and at, at some point something happens and you have the ability to drop the mask and here you are, the real you. So, yeah, probably the guy from Death Note was just always a crazy ass fucker and yeah, he was pretending to be normal and then he just, boom, just decided to become himself. And the princess si princess's uh, situation also may be similar so he was always a strong willed man wielding a fucking mask of a weakling and then transforming to his former self but honestly that prince doesn't give me single fucking clue of of actually saying that yeah he was initially a strong person just was hiding behind the back of Ragnar. No, no, no. He was always a weak person because um, he didn't learn his lesson before that moment. He was living a normal life. There was no um, reason, no no events for him that can push him to to become the man that he became now. So, I feel that in this exact case of Prince Canute, I feel that's an extremely rushed development and the complete character change. I do like it, I do like it, I'm not gonna lie, that's okay, I'm fine with seeing a strong ass prince that leading people. That's good, that's good. I like strong characters, I don't like weaklings most of the time, at least such like he was. But I feel like this was too sudden, guys. That was too sudden, too unrealistic, and I would prefer it to be slower. That m may have started previously, like earlier, and, and that moment could have become the moment, right? But he should have been much stronger already before that moment, and he just went like that, like level 1 to level fucking 100, basically. So yeah, that happened, and I, I think I said everything about that. Um, and yeah, they had this dialogue with the priest about love, about uh, humanity losing themselves. As, and as I've said, I don't really want to comment on that. Uh, it's just a way to think about it, it's just a philosophy. And I don't think that's love, it's something different. Um... Uh, but, uh, yeah, a dead human is much better for nature than a live human, that's for sure. Because for us, we value life, but nature 
it's a constant cycle of life and death. And it values both, you know. Because life is long, but death is eternal. And for us, for living creatures, that's fucking scary. But for life itself, that's okay. I mean, even life is, overall, is something very limited. It appeared, nice, it lives, nice, and then it's, it's gonna disappear. Because, <laughs> yeah. It's it's all, sometimes, sometime uh, it will end. Um, and basically, yeah, then we have... Um, uh, Th Th Thorkel brought, um, kind of brought Thorf uh, Th um, Thors into the scene. He asked the question, what's the real warrior? Uh, Thorfinn wasn't able to answer this question. He was catapulted in the fucking moon. <laughs> the first guy ever to reach the moon in the land of Vikings. Um, I suppose Lee Ferrickson would have been very proud of Thorfinn for finding new horizons <laughs> that was really funny actually him flying away because he fucking flew like 100 meters away um and then bjorn crazed bjorn decided to attack a prince and then the prince made the f <laughs> where's the face man that was such a funny face i don't know is that an animation thing or or what? One sec. One sec. I'm gonna catch it. I'm gonna catch it. Do the face, Princey. Do the face. Do the face. I'm gonna mimic the face. You're not gonna like it though. Oh, I missed it. Where was the fucking face? Oh yeah, I got it. Here's the face. <laughs> oh, jeez. Look at the... Oops. Look at the face. Does that look super scary to you? That looks like someone's trying to shit, but, but he ate a lot of bread. And he has a lot of <laughs> difficulties with that. Like, add, add some fucking sound effect to that, and here we go. I suppose that was beautiful. So... Mm, mm. I mean, I get... Uh, as I've said, I have mixed feelings about that. That's cool that Prince kind of evolves, but he, I, do, I cannot take him seriously. Even though he evolved in the... Like a warrior of light type of uh, character, like, yeah, now we're gonna make it all right, oh, my son, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna save you, stop fighting, and I like those overall ideas, but <laughs> him looking menacing, no way. Askeladd's butthole looks more menacing than that. So that's kind of funny, but Bjorn was like, ooh, ooh, my own. That's a scary ass woman. And some fucker attacked him in the guts. I mean, that's kind of surprising. Like, Bjorn's full of blades, and Askelad is full of arrows in his knees, which he ended up getting out of him, by the way. And if you do not know, that's almost impossible to do, because those are arrows, guys. They're like that. They go into and they don't go out. You have to push them through and break them. And but I, uh, movie logic and anime logic, every logic in the universe, they use that. They just take that out of yourself. Like in Berserk as well, like Gus was always like ripping the arrows out of him, like like they're nothing. And yeah, you try. Yeah. I saw a guy. Uh, um, not once, even my father got through that uh, 
harmony his finger with um, fishing uh, what's it called thing shit how is it called good and stupid <sighs> hook Jesus such an easy word fishing hook Get getting in the finger, and you will not be able to get it out without fucking tearing half of your finger. So they had to, eh, pushing it through to cut it with some tool, and then get it. Or that's gonna be less painful and less damaging to your body. And the arrow is much more. So yeah. And uh, what was I trying to say is that, um. And this anime, I mean, those arrows, those blades, they were dirty, they were rusty, and there were no antibiotics those times. So you getting a little scratch was almost enough to to die, because I don't remember. I mean, not gonna go. The, quite a lot of illnesses from dirt, from earth, they can go, and and you're gonna die. So that's fun seeing Thor, uh, Bjorn being all cut and even his guts being um, badly damaged. And Prince like, okay, will you leave? <laughs> sure, yeah, no problem. Just just spit on it a bit, and it's gonna be fine. And yeah, the pri the priest was like, whoa, that's a miracle. And that's exactly a, or a, that that was exactly a miracle. That was exactly a miracle, what happened there. Not a realistic, just a miracle. But the prince then said like, stop fighting, I'm gonna follow me, uh, I'm gonna tell you when and who to fight. And that's cool, as I've said, I had mixed, mixed feelings. It's just a little criticism that I just couldn't pass without touching on but overall there was a great episode i liked it and i'm glad that no one basically died at least a couple of dozen or maybe even hundred of uh, Askeladd's ex gang i don't know what's about Askeladd, what's about him being um what's his plans next but at least he was able uh his um Operation to kill Ragnar and to kill those people in the village. They, um, he was saying that that was at least some of that was for a prince development he was trying to achieve. And um, I mean, I suppose that was a part of a plan, and that worked like a miracle, as the priest said. So yeah. Mm. Thank you guys for watching. It was a nice episode, as I've said. Uh, see you in the next one, uh, which I don't think is going to be pretty soon, because this weekend I only was able to record one. And uh, I'm not sure how, f how soon I will be able to bring another one, but I'll try to bring it faster than, than later. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye-bye.